So we're starting out in Premiere Pro, where I've already prepared my two main clips, as you can see here. Next, I'm going to select both of them, right-click, and choose Replace with After Effects Composition. That's going to send us straight into After Effects. Once we're here, we'll take the first clip and duplicate it using Ctrl plus D. On this duplicated layer, I'm going to create a rotoscope of my subject. I'll skip showing the full rotoscoping process to keep things quick, but if you need help with that, you can check out my previous videos where I go over it step by step. Once you're done and happy with the result, you'll notice we now have three layers. The top one is our rotoscoped subject, the middle one still includes the background, and the bottom one will be used for the transition. Now let's grab our third clip, this one right here, and drag it right in between the other two clips. After placing it in the middle, make sure it's positioned exactly between the top and bottom layers, kind of like a sandwich. Once it's lined up, your timeline should look something like what you see here in the video. Next, move your playhead to the point where the middle layer starts. Go ahead and duplicate it. Then right-click the duplicated layer, go to Time and choose Freeze Frame. Now we're going to take that Freeze Frame layer and shift it slightly to the left. After that, trim off the remaining part of the layer, right up to the point where the transition clip begins, which is right here. Now over on the right side, in the Effects and Presets panel, let's search for the Transform effect and drag it onto our Freeze Frame layer. With the playhead still positioned at the end of the freeze frame layer, right where we left it, we'll create two keyframes, one for scale and one for rotation. Then move the playhead to the very beginning of the freeze frame layer. Here, we're going to shrink the scale down enough so that the image disappears completely behind our subject, just like this. For the rotation, you can add a few full spins to give it that trippy effect. At this point, you should have a rough preview of how the transition will look. To make it smoother and more polished, press U on your keyboard to reveal all the keyframes on that layer. Then select all the keyframes and hit F9 to apply Easy Ease. Finally, don't forget to enable Motion Blur for this layer by checking the Motion Blur box here. As you can see now, the effect already looks way better, much smoother and more dynamic. Now let's finish things up by working on our rotoscope layer at the top. Move your playhead to the exact point where the freeze frame layer ends. This is where the motion will begin, then press Shift plus P plus S to reveal both position and scale properties. Go ahead and add keyframes for both. Next, move the playhead to the very end of the rotoscope layer. Here, we'll increase the scale and also shift the position so that the subject moves off screen to the left. Just like this. Once again, select all the keyframes, press F9 to smooth them with easy ease, and don't forget to enable motion blur for this layer too. And if you want to take it even further and give it a unique finish, we can add one last effect. But first, hit Ctrl plus S to save your project and let's jump back into Premiere Pro. Now that we have all of our clips synced up back in Premiere Pro, go ahead and scrub to the exact moment where the transition happens, right around here. I'm going to drop an adjustment layer in between the clips and apply my custom shake effect from the Shake Cut preset pack. Playing that back, you can see it instantly adds way more emphasis and energy to the transition and I think it looks super clean. But let me know what you think in the comments.